Yeah, good morning. Uh, happy back to work day, everybody. Not many smiling faces here this morning, but it's getting busier. It's going to over the next few days. Our stations are very busy, aren't they? London Bridge is one of the lucky ones. It's had a billion pounds worth of investment here, which is why it looks shiny and new. But lots of people around the country won't be seeing that. They'll want to know where their money's going. And also, is it being spent well by the people running it? And that's a big debate, isn't it? Should it be companies and train companies, or should it be the government? We've got Kat and Robert here with us this morning. Morning to you both. Happy back to work day. Let's uh, kick off with this big debate, Kat. You think you campaign for people, for the government to be running more services like this. Why do you think that should be the case? That's right. So rail privatisation has utterly failed to deliver. And we've seen that today coming back to work with incredibly high fares. People paying hundreds of pounds more for their season tickets. We're paying much more than people in other European countries. We're paying increases above wages. And what we believe is that we need the railway to be run for people and passengers rather than for profit. We've got a handful of shareholders taking money out of the railway, wasting our money, and we could reinvest that money into in reducing fares and increasing capacity on the railway. And by the way, public ownership is supported by 76% of the public. Well, there's lots of points there, but Robert, let's just start with that idea. You know, your think tank, you're in favour of companies doing things, not less more than the government. Some of those points, do you not think that's fair? Well, it's obviously true that everyone's paying uh, more than they want to, and um, arguably more than they should, but nationalisation, it's a, it's a slogan, not a solution. The it, the, the, the the, the, the railways since privatisation have actually, by quite a lot of metrics, got a lot better. It's, 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 it's weird to think of this. We, we tend to think that everything in Britain is utterly awful. But if you look at, across Europe, our satisfaction ratings with our railways are the highest of any major European network. And yes, our prices are higher than Europe. But that's because across Europe, roughly speaking, you only pay 40% of the actual cost of your journey in your, is your, in your ticket price. The rest comes from the, the general taxpayer. Whereas in the UK, that's already been, uh, that's traditionally been at 60% and it's getting a lot higher. We've basically taken a decision that people should pay for the cost of their journeys through their own tickets rather than being sub the rest of the public subsidising them. And given that the people using railways tend to be richer than the rest of us, that's not an obviously wrong thing to do. Okay. So we, we have to have public subsidy for the railways because it's really important for the country. We have to have passengers paying. What we don't need to do is waste a billion pounds a year on shareholders and on a fragmented system. What we have right now is a real mess. Well, just on that point, though, back you know d many decades ago when the government were running things, do you accept that that doesn't go down well, that memory of what it used to be like with people these days? Well, what I think we need to do is think about the future and stop thinking about British Rail, learn the lessons, of course, but actually, you know, when we've seen the East Coast Line failing again and again in private hands and working in public hands, and when we look to other countries in Europe and look at models like Deutsche Bahn, which are working really well, publicly owned models, that's what we need to be looking to. We, German, we need... satisfaction with their railway, German satisfaction with their railways, it's far, 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 far below British. I'm, I'm not sure where exactly those figures are coming from, but I, I think the important thing is that people believe that passengers should be at the heart of our railway. One why, final point, why? we haven't got that much time, sorry, just Robert, finally, that point about the East Coast Main Line, it's done pretty well when been run by the government, hasn't it, over recent but, years? But what the government did when it uh, took back the mainline of public ownership was allow competition. It allowed more than one operator to use it at the same time, which had a had a great effect. It's, it's a thing called open access. The government is actually engaging in the first major review of franchising for the last 20 years, and uh, this is one of the ideas that they're looking at. And the regu we think, the regulators think, the competition authorities think, all think that that could lower prices for consumers, and it's a really good idea. Okay, both going to have to leave it there. I'm sorry, but these two are definitely back at work. Second of January. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, the debate is hot, isn't it? And it's not just about who runs it today. For a lot of these passengers here, it's about who's going to be paying for it. Prices are up three, and three a bit percent around the country today, and that's the big issue that we're talking about. Sure. No, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for that.